Okay, hello, welcome to Blue Tips. We start our timer here, so we will stay under our 15 minute time limit, our promise here. Um, Blue Tips, as we've said before, we like to save the topics on this to try to do timely presentations. And this one is kind of timely because over the last couple of weeks at Creighton, we've been having a lot of phishing attacks. Okay? Now, what are phishing attacks? One of the things that IT is often guilty of is making up terms, especially acronyms, and assuming everyone knows what they mean. Um, and I'm sure there are some people who don't know what phishing is. So let's start by defining what phishing is for those people who don't know. And I, I went to my reliable resource of Wikipedia to come up with this definition here. Um, phishing is the act of attempting to acquire information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details, sometimes even money directly, by masquerading as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. So the analogy to real fishing with a fishing rod and, and bait is actually very similar because when you go out fishing, at least when I do, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm throwing out the bait out there hoping that something might actually jump on there. And it's the same way with this fishing. Someone is putting things out there in an email promising something, maybe trying to, to pray in some fear, trying to convince you to give them information you shouldn't be giving them. Now there are different variations. Um, spear fishing is actually what we've been having here at Creighton. Spear phishing has to do with a very targeted type of message. General phishing, it's, I'll show some samples here, but one way you can tell is that there's nothing specific. It'll say something like, dear user, um, webmail, things like that. Spear phishing is when they specifically target institution. The emails we were receiving last week had Creighton University logos in them. They used terms like CU mail in them, so someone knew that they were targeting CU individuals trying to get credentials. That's, so that's spear phishing. Whaling, I thought that's an interesting one, that's kind of like spear phishing, but instead of just going at one particular institution, you're going after a group of people who have lots of money. Okay, whales, as I might call them. So, um, yeah, that one is, would be a, a particular program targeting individuals with lots of money or resources. And then social engineering. You could think of that as phishing, but not electronically. Okay, an example might be, I call Kathy on the phone and say, Kathy, I'm Scott with the service desk at Creighton University, and your account has been compromised through a phishing attack. We need to reset things right away. Can you please give me your name and password so I can go in there and correct your email account? Okay, that would be a, term, a form of social engineering that I'm pretending to be someone I'm not, convincing her to give me something that she should not be giving me. Um, I wasn't very good at it. Some people, you know, go to a whole story of making friends with you first before they actually try to sink that, that um, hook in and get the information. Why do people fish? Okay, I, I get asked that quite a bit, and I wonder too, sometimes. Um, identity theft is one of them. Sometimes people are trying to get that information from you. They'll ask for your, your name, your mailing address. They even go as far as asking for social security number sometimes. And if they can get that, they can actually steal your identity, open credit cards in your name, whatever they want to. Um, again, collecting personal information is, of course, being part of that. The other thing with personal information is there's actually a value to personal information. If I get personal information on thousands of people, I can sell that data to companies who then want, might use that for our advertising, marketing, things like that. So your personal information actually is, there's a, there's a monetary value to that which people can use if they can collect it. Of course, financial gain, people are trying to steal stuff. Create mischief. I'm sure some of the phishing that takes place and the spamming that comes as a result of that is simply done by people doing it because they can't. They just want to be jerks, basically. And, oh, let's just flood the system with the email and see what will happen. Okay? Certainly that is some of why these things happen. And sometimes for even a political statement. Maybe it's a country um, that is actually wanting to exert its power and show that, hey, we've got some pretty clever cyber criminals here. And, and that certainly, I don't know the case of what was happening here at Creighton the last two weeks. But I do know other institutions, they can't sometimes trace those to China or to other countries where those attacks are coming from. Um, I didn't really actually do include in the slide here, but you know, what do they do with this phishing? What we have seen is that if, um, let's just throw Kathy out, if she comp gets her account compromised, someone sends her something and she goes and gives up her credentials to them, they then will turn around and use Kathy's account to send out thousands and thousands of email messages. That's why a lot of our users were seeing a lot of spam, is because several people, actually I think about 14, had their credentials given up for whatever purpose, because they were um, susceptible to these phishing attacks. 
Now, I've got a few sampling, sample phishing emails. This was nice. We don't do this at Creighton. It'd be nice. Um, another school I found, I forget who it was. It might have been Cornell. They actually have a website where they publish all of their phishing messages that they receive. So this one was just dated from November 8th, very re recent. And you look at the subject line, faculty and staff, webmail validation, dear webmail user. So that'd be very generic, right? Dear webmail user. Due to high numbers of inactive email accounts on our server, all email users are urged to validate their email account within 24 hours of receiving this email by using the validation link. Click my account to confirm that their email account is active. They're preying on fears here. They're making you think, if you don't do this right now, within 24 hours you're going to lose access to your email account. Okay, that's a very common ploy done in phishing attacks. They even say, failure to update this will um, have your account be temporarily blocked or suspended. Now, if we look at this message, everything in it is generic. There's nothing specific that this is from the actual institution that they were sending things to the users of. If, and I can't do it in this slide here, but if you look at the, the My Account link, it doesn't go to the university's websites. It goes to some other website then, which the whole purpose is, is to steal your name and password. Look at another sample. Same school here. We are updating all webmail account for spam protection. We're updating them. Please click the link below. Again, very similar, very generic. This one's a little more obvious that the English isn't as good in it. That's another um, strong thing that happens in phishing emails. If you look and it's not well written, there's a good chance it may not be legit. Um, but same idea here, trying to prey on the idea of updating things. One more. This is IT Service Desk sending you this email for your account upgrade. We are currently conducting an upgrade in all email account. Again, very poor English in this, but same idea. They want you to click here to go upgrade your account. It's going to ask you to log in, and they steal your name and password. This is one that actually um, would be, I want to say successful at Creighton. We'd be afraid of this one right now, because a lot of people know at Creighton, we're working on upgrading people's email accounts to Office 365. So if someone at Creighton gets this right now, it actually might sound somewhat legit. It's like, oh, here's how I can opt in to get my Office 365. But again, there's nothing specific. And um, even the IT service administrator, there's no name there. Be careful of anything like that. Why should I care about phishing, or you, or whoever's watching this, listening to me? Um, a few reasons. And actually, they go back to why someone phishes in the first place. Identity theft is a big one. Again, your personal information um, is important. If you give out things like even as... Um, even just your mailing address and things like that, people can use that information against you for identity theft or just collecting your personal information to sell and make profit off of. Um, financial loss, of course, if you give your credit card information and they get into your bank account, um, very easy to lose money on that. My sister had her, that's similar, this was years ago, where it was a phishing email saying that her internet access was gonna be turned off and they, their database has become corrupt and they needed her credit card information to keep paying for internet. And yeah, I mean, she she didn't. The credit card companies covered stuff, but it wasn't before they'd already used her credit cards then to buy a whole bunch of stuff and have it shipped places. So it is, it can be a big deal. Um, the credit mischief one. I mean, here's the deal: if you lose your credentials and someone starts sending out thousands of email messages from your account, that doesn't always look real good to the people on your contact list who they're getting messages from. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't want someone getting all kinds of messages from me saying click here or go buy this or whatever. So it's also kind of that. What is do it? What is do it here at Creighton? What are we doing about phishing? First of all, we do provide, we have a spam filter, proof point spam filter. And some of you may think that that's only for spam, for stuff you don't want. It's also filtering out tons of viruses and phishing messages before they even get to you. Okay, I, I don't have the stats here at Creighton, but a previous institution I worked at, I know they'd look at these things. And for every one email you receive, there's probably two or three that didn't even get to your mailbox. That things like this proof point or other spam filters are weeding out because they're known viruses or known phishing attacks. So that is in place doing that. We also have firewalls on campus. What firewalls do is they can control some of the traffic that goes between Creighton and the outside world. Um, when we find out, so we get a phishing email that's identified, and we know it's going to a certain website, we can use firewalls then to block access to prevent users from accidentally going out there and giving up their credentials. We have restrictions in place for some things. What I mean by that is, on email, for instance, if I were to try to send a message right now to 5,000 people, 
it's not going to let me. There are limits to how many people that we can all send messages to. Not everyone, people like admissions on campus, they have reasons to email 5,000 people at a time, so they don't necessarily have those. But we do have some restrictions to help prevent some of those spam. We also put some restrictions on personal computers for, again, that same purpose, that if your account's compromised, it's not going to um, possibly leak over to the rest of our network. We have a lot of personal information about people in terms of our students, our employees, and it's very important to protect that data. So that's why we do have some restrictions on there. We have events that trigger flags. Do it does not go in and read everyone's email. There's no way they could, plus we don't want to. Um, but there, you know, there's millions of messages a day on that system. But things that we do have is we have events that trigger flags. So if we do notice an email account just sent out 500 messages, for instance, there's a trigger that goes to someone, and they're going to go investigate that, because that's not normal behavior for someone to be sending out those messages, and it could indicate a compromised account. That's really how we find out someone's given up the name and passwords. That's about the only way we know, unless they report a problem, is that we've suddenly seen massive amounts of email come out of someone's account. And at that case, point, we will disable those accounts, okay, until we can get a hold of that person and change their password, get things taken care of. What happens is, once we start sending out spam from any of our user accounts, other email services will say, hey, Creighton's sending out a whole bunch of spam here, we're going to blacklist them. And that's what happened last week. Microsoft started blacklisting Creighton email because we had compromised accounts. And any messages you tried to send from a Creighton email account to a Hotmail account or a Live.com account would get stopped. It wouldn't go through. Creighton has to actually go through, clean up these accounts, prove to Microsoft, to Google, to the other email providers that, hey, we've got our stuff cleaned up now, and then they'll start receiving messages. Um, that's kind of a big deal. When we get blacklisted by Microsoft, that makes it so our admissions people can't communicate with prospective students. And if we can't communicate with prospective students, we may not have as many students next year, which impacts a lot of things, including the bottom line, tuition. Um, last thing Do It does is education and notification. This is part of that education during this session. We also send out emails to try to help people. We send things out through social media as well. Because when it comes down to it, all these other things do it puts in place with the firewalls, filters, things like that. If a user goes out and tells someone name, name and password, there's not a whole lot do it can do about it at that point, except for clean up the mess. So the important thing is educating the end users at the school to know the right things to do to prevent this from happening to them in the first place. Here's a sample. This was actually, you may have received this in the email. This is something do it sent out. And this was a real one of the phishing things, either this week or last week. This was this what you would call spear phishing. They had the Creighton logo on it. It's not very good. You see there's shadows on three sides of it. Someone just grabbed that off our website. That's all they did. Um, it comes from a real person's account because that person's account was probably fished first, and then someone you just hit the spear fish from. Um, anything that comes about IT, we're going to usually send things to the whole campus using the Do It official account, so that should be a sign there. They're trying to prey on fear that your email is going to expire, email doesn't expire at Creighton. Again, um, yeah, email doesn't expire at Creighton, so don't fall for those. They, um, this link here where it said click here to upgrade, if you were to mouse over that, you'd see the address is not going to a Creighton address at all. It's going to something called kernbits.com, which is some web server somewhere else. They put Creighton in the URL, trying to fool you to have Creighton.edu, but always look in the address, what's right after HTTP, and that's going to show you the name of the server, kernbits.com, as opposed to creighton.edu. Okay? And they even tried to throw a fake copyright statement in there, trying to make it look like it's legit when it wasn't. I just want to go back to that. Yeah. In terms of uh, people reading emails so fast and trying to do something with it, I can see that people probably read the subject line as your password will expire soon. Possibly. Of, yeah, instead of your email. Yep. Yeah, oh, certainly. I mean, these people aren't dumb who are trying to fish for these things. They put together well-crafted campaigns to try to get things. We had about 14 people give up the credentials based on getting emails like this. Um, okay, What last few things here. What you do to protect yourself. First of all, do it here at Creighton is never going to ask you for your password over the phone or by email. So just don't ever give up your password by email. Don't ever 
Um, email your password to someone. Don't give it to someone over the phone. Don't follow links for messages unless you are 100% they're legit. That last one, yes, it looked somewhat legit, and, and it's very understandable someone may not have saw that there were some problems there. But if you have even a question, don't follow the links from it. If you, um, the example, if you get an email saying, your password's expiring soon, go here to reset it. Instead of doing that, what I would do is I would open up a web browser, go to ami.creighton.edu, which is our password reset link, and reset it that way. That way you're not possibly following a wrong link. You're going to where you know you reset a password. Um, beware of messages claiming that a service will be shut down. That's probably the number one ploy used by fishers, is they claim that something's going to happen bad unless you react right now. And they want to get you quick for your time to think about it. It's the old saying, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. I didn't share any phishing messages like that, but other common ones, I just got one today in my spam box, I'm in Gmail, is you've just won the lottery in Europe or something like that. Please contact us right away. It's too good to be true, it probably is. I didn't even buy a lottery ticket, so I know I didn't win that. Um, if you get suspicious emails, you can always forward them to abuse at creighton.edu. That goes to our security team. They can look at it right away. And like I said, if it's a message go that we see going to the whole campus, we can then block that website to prevent other users from possibly going there and giving out their credentials. When you forward a message, instead of just saying forward, what's the best thing to do actually is start a new message address it to abuse at crate.edu, and then from Outlook, drag the message you got on top of the message you're sending. What that does is it sends all the extra things called headers and gives them more information about the message. If you can't figure out forwarding, it's better than nothing, but that's the preferred way to forward it because then they really get extra information. You can also always call 1111, which is a do-it service desk. Someone there can help you as well. Um, when you go to websites, I mentioned about going to AMI to, to um, change my password. In the URL, if it's a secure website, there should be a padlock, and it should tell you information there. Click on that and read that information. That can also help alleviate your fears of knowing if it's real or not. And as I said earlier, go directly to websites rather than following links from messages. Okay? And I got one more. This is the um, is it real test. Here's an email I received, and uh, this is from a few years ago. See if you think this one's real or not. I'll read it here. Hi, Rick. Hope this is, um, nope, this is not a hoax or joke. Just a way of saying thanks for participating in the world's first online test drive with the all new Mitsubishi Outlander Sport and getting one of the highest feature collections of the day. We hope you had a great time, and we want to send you a $500 gift certificate as a thank you for taking the live drive. So right away, you're thinking, oh, is that too good to be true? Someone's saying, give me $500, aren't they? Um, actually, I won't go into the whole thing here. This ended up being real, and I actually did win $500, which was kind of exciting. <laughs> but when I first got this, it was a month or so after I'd done this online thing where I drove a car remotely, and I'd forgotten about that. And my first inkling was, okay, is someone fishing? Because they were asking for a mailing address. That was all at this point. But sometimes a phishing email may do that. They just may ask for something innocuous first, like a reply to an email or something like that. But once they get you, the communications down the road might be, oh, you know what, we really need your bank account information to direct deposit this. So I did reply back because I remembered that I really did this. And um, we straighten things out, but I was very cautious. So that little statement about if it seems too good to be true, it probably isn't. It's not always true. I mean, sometimes if it does seem too good, it does turn out to be good things. And I, it was kind of a nice $500 gift certificate I got for doing this. So, at any rate, I'm actually three minutes over. My alarm didn't go off. I apologize for that. But we'll call this done. I'll shut down the recording.